Okay, Calc students, um, this is section 3.8. We are talking about exponential growth and decay. Um, some of these problems I'm going to work with you um, and some of them going to leave them to you. But if you look through the PowerPoint, they have a basic formula that we use for, in this case, exponential growth um, that uses the natural number E. But your basic formula is that the population at time T equals the initial population or the population at time zero times E to some constant times T. Okay, so the population at times t equals the population at time zero, or the initial population, times e to the kt. Now, k is the constant we need to solve for. Okay, t is your time. Okay, so in this case, it says a bacteria culture initially contains 100 cells. That's going to be our p of zero. Okay, that's our initial. Um, and grows at a rate proportional to its size. So when it says grows at a rate proportional, okay, um, that's where we use this formula that I just put up. Now, if they said it doubled every so many, then you just use a base of two to whatever power. But grows at a rate proportional to its size is when we use this basic formula, okay? But again, we have to solve for K, that's the constant. So it says, after an hour, the population has increased to 560. Find an expression for the number of bacteria after T hours. So again, we are trying to find whatever K is. Okay, we're trying to solve for that constant. And so we have to put in what we know. Okay, so to get started here, um, this part of the formula this P of zero is going to be 100. That's what we started with, right? And then times E to the K times one. Now, they said after one hour, okay, the population had increased to 560. So this equals, whoa, I'm not sure what just happened there. <laughs> that equals 560. Okay, not sure why my box scooched down. So that's what we are trying to solve for, okay? So um, if we solve for this, then we have 560 over 100 equals E to the K. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Now we L in both sides. Okay, if we ln both sides, then the ln of E is going to cancel. Then we have ln of, I'm just going to say 5.6 equals K. Um, 560 divided by 100 is 5.6. So that's why I just turned it into a decimal. So that's our K. Okay, we just solved for it. Um, so if we plug that back into the formula for K, so then we have P of T equals 100 E to the LN of 5.6 and then T. Okay, so we are again kind of referring back to this basic formula. Okay. Um, we just replace the K with the LN of 5.6. Now, if you notice, okay, what happens when you have E raised to the LN? These cancel, right? And this comes down. So this ends up giving us P of T equals 100 times 5.6 to the T power. That would be my answer for part A. Okay, so write an expression for the number of bacteria after T hours. That's it. That's my expression for part A. 
Um, you might want, I don't know how it'll take it. You might want to put the 5.6 in parentheses. Maybe that would be a little easier. Because of course the T is only on the 5.6, not the 100. Okay. Um, it says find the number of bacteria after four hours. Obviously you plug in the four, not going to do that one. Find the rate of growth after four hours. Now, anytime you see rate, rate of growth after four hours, rate makes you think derivative. Okay, so I will just kind of help you set this one up. Um, I'm going to have to get some room, so I'm going to erase what I already have on the board. Hope that's okay. So, rate of growth again makes you think derivative. So if we have the derivative of p with respect to t, um, again, that is some constant times the initial p function. Okay. So what that means is that the derivative of p at four, because we're talking about the rate of growth at four hours, equals k times the population at four hours. Okay, so we know what k equals. This is the same k that we found in the first part. Okay, and we can figure out what p equals based on. Let me rewrite this. Of course, this was 100 times 5.6 to the t power. I should have left that in the box, I guess. Um, so then we can plug all of this in. So my k is, of course, ln, whoops, of 5.6. I already found my k in part a. And then times the p function, my p function, is 100 times 5.6, again, let me put that in parentheses, to the t power, well, the t here is four, okay? So that's what my answer to part C would be. You've got to poke that in a calculator. You should get, um, it says round your answer to the nearest whole number. If you poke that in a calculator, it should give you 169,425 bacteria an hour. Okay, so that's part C. 169,425 bacteria. Um, my nine looks a little weird there, but that's all right. So now they want to know when will the population reach 10,000? Okay, well, I'll help you set it up, but that's probably the easiest problem out of all of this is. So we go back to our original equation. Remember the original equation was P of T equals 100 times 5.6 to the T. Okay, what we just put there in the box. I'm not sure why I rewrote it. Um, so now we want to solve for T. So just put 10,000 in place of the P of T on the left-hand side. Okay, um, and you can solve that for t. So again, you're going to have to divide off the 100, okay, and then take the ln or log of both sides to get the t out of the exponent. Remember how you solve exponential functions is to log both sides so you can get the variable you're trying to solve for out of the exponent spot. You can pull it down in front. Um, so pretty straightforward. I said I wasn't going to do it, and then I'm sitting here and I'm doing it. Okay, so we have 100, and again, take the ln of both sides. I'm going to stop. You all can figure that out, how many hours. Okay, all right, that's number one. Um, number two, I'm just going to do the first part of, let me clear the board here. Oh my goodness. 
Um, number two, you're essentially doing the exact same calculations on number two for parts A, B, and C. You're just using two different date ranges. So I'm going to walk you through part A, um, and then you all can do B and C yourself. So um, it says the table gives estimates of the world population in millions from 1750 to 2000. Round your answers to the nearest million. So we have this nice little table. Part A says use the exponential model. That's the same one we used from before. Okay, exponential model is P of T equals P of zero times E to the KT power. Again, K being some constant we have to solve for. And that's population at time T equals the initial population times E to the KT. Um, so it says use the exponential model and the population figures for 1750 and 1800 to predict the world population in 1900 and 1950. Okay, so first we're going to have to find the exponential model. We've got to solve for k. All right, so in this case, we're using 1750 as kind of our initial um, population because that was the starting point they gave us. Okay, so we're using this as our initial time, okay, and this is the second one. All right, so from 1750 to 1800, obviously my T is going to equal 50. That's 50 years. Okay, so um, it says the initial time is 1750. So we're going to substitute T minus 1750 for T in that exponential model theorem. And um, so here's what the exponential model is going to look like. We're going to have P of T equals P of 1750, because that's what we're using as our starting point, okay, times E to the K, and then here it's going to be T minus 1750. Okay, so again, like I said earlier, if we're going to 1800, that's going to be 1800 minus 1750, or just 50. Um, so, that means P of 1800, in this case, okay, equals 980, okay, P of 1800 equals 980, I got that from the table, okay, and the 980 then, now we're going to start using this part of the formula. Okay, the population at 1750. Okay, population at 1750 from the table is 790. Okay, so this equals 790 e to the k times, well, maybe I shouldn't do that yet. k times 1800 minus 1750. Again, my T is just going to be 50. Um, so this gives us um, 980 divided by 790 okay, equals E to the 50K, or K times 50. Okay, now again, if we LN both sides, okay, then we've got ln of 98 over 79, I just dropped the tens to reduce, equals 50k, right, because the ln and the e cancel. So ln of 98 over 79 equals 50k. So that means that k if we take the ln of 98 over 79 and divide by 50, that means k is going to, well, let me write what it is exactly first. So k equals, let's say, 1 50th times the ln of 98 over 79, and that is approximately, as a decimal, 0 0.004310. 
I've got to be able to read my own writing. I worked this out ahead of time. So 043104. That's what K is approximately. Okay. So that makes my new model, okay, my new model that I can use on the 1900 and the 1950, that makes my new model P of T equals 790 E to the 0 0.004310 to the T minus 1750. Okay, that's what I'm using to solve part A. So I'm plugging in 1900 for T and I'm plugging in 1950 for T. Okay, or you can just go ahead and do the subtraction there, the 1900 minus 1750 and the 1950 minus 1750. So you could just use the K times what 150 or 200 there. But you're just plugging those in. Now, you're going to go through the exact same process for parts B and C. They want a whole new model, okay, for each one. In part B, you're going to base it off of 1800 instead of 1750. In part C, you're going to base it off 1900 instead of 1750. Okay, same process, all right? Um, but that just happens to be what you're going to use, the one I wrote in purple here, for these two blocks. Okay, then you got to build a whole new model for the other two. Okay, hope that's helpful. Um, now, question three is a little different because it's one of those like step you through. Um, and so I, on my end, um, I, I probably should have done some more look on your end, but on my end, it, it, it looks a little wonky. So um, in this case, once again, we're using that same kind of exponential model here. Okay, let me scroll up a little more. So this is still the same type of exponential model that we used in the previous two. All right. Um, now I kind of cut off the top part of this, you all can see. Um, it says the half-life of cesium-137, I guess that's how you say it, is 30 years. Suppose we have a 10 milligram sample. So that's what it says. Um, the half-life of cesium-137 is 30 years. Suppose we have a 10 milligram sample. Okay, and it says find the mass that remains after T years. So first, if we start off with a 10 milligram sample, that's my, what my y sub zero is. Your y sub zero is all, always the initial amount. Okay, we start off with a 10 milligram sample. That's what's going in there, it's 10. Okay, now there's some work to be done here as we solve for K. Because going from part A, step one, to part B, there's a whole bunch of math that happened in there that they just kind of skipped over. So hang with me here a minute. I'm going to do it out here to the side. Um, so again, down here, you notice this kind of looks completely different, this part. Okay. Um, so hang with me. What we're looking for here is, it says if the half-life is 30 years, then that means that if I start off with, first of all, my, say, y of 30 would equal one half of my initial amount of 10, which is 5, right? After 30 years, I should have 5 milligrams left, okay? Because I started with 10 and the half-life is 30 years. So what that means then is that 10 times e to the kt equals 5. Now, here's the problem. We know the t, right? Because I would only get an amount of 5 if my t was the 30. So this is actually 10 times e to the 30k equals 5, right? I still need to solve for k. 
That's where all this is headed. Okay. So my T is 30. I kind of flip-flop the order there. But T is 30 because that's the half-life. So I know if I start with 10, I'm going to end up with 5 after 30 years. Okay, that's what half-life is all about. So that means that E to the 30K equals 1 half. Now, if I LN both sides, okay, to get the, the 30K out of the exponent spot, you got to use logs to get your variable down out of exponent. So if I LN both sides, my LN of E is going to cancel, of course. I'm going to have 30K equals LN of 1 half. Now, here's where they make too big of a jump without really showing you what in the world they did. LN of 1 half, if you remember your log rules, that is LN of 1 minus LN of 2. Do you all remember the subtraction slash division log rule? Um, Anyway, if you take the log of something that's divided, you can separate it out into two logs that are subtracted. Well, what's ln of 1? Well, ln of 1 is essentially asking you e to what power equals 1. Well, e to the 0 power equals 1. So this is just 0. So it's just minus ln of 2. Okay, so what we have here essentially is that 30k equals negative ln of 2. Okay, so then how do we solve for k? We solve for k then, I'm running out of boredom room, by negative ln of 2 over 30. Okay, so that's what my k is. So now here's my new formula. Okay, my new formula then is y of t equals 10, that was my initial amount, times e to the negative ln of 2 over 30 times t. Now, here's where the rub comes in. Um, e and ln kind of cancel, right? So my e and ln cancel out here. And then that causes this 2 to drop down. Okay, the E and the LN cancel, and it causes the 2 to drop down. Now, the negative, the 30, and the T all have to stay up in the exponent spot. So this now becomes Y of T equals 10 times 2 to the negative T over 30 power. I didn't really write that too good in the exponent spot. I've got this line here negative t over, I'll use the line, over 30. This is what my function looks like after I've done all of the reduction. So what do you think goes in this block? Okay. This is my new function. So here, if I plug a 10 in, to the function, okay? Um, let me, yeah, I'm running out of boardroom. So on this one, it says after 10 years, we have the following. Plug a 10 into here, okay? So if I plug a 10 in, let me go in a different color, then y of 10 equals 10 times 2 to the negative 10 over 30, which is, 10 times 2 to the negative one-third. Are you guys with me there? So this is like your new function if you put a 10 in for y. So what's going to go here? Negative one-third is going to go in that block. Okay, and then you're literally poking that in the calculator and figuring out what it is. It says round your answer to two decimal places. Um, again, I don't know that you started with 10, but mine would have been like 7.94. Okay. All right. Um, they left way too much unresolved between step A and step B. So I wanted to make sure and actually go through the math with you. Okay so that you can see how they ended up where they did.
I hope that's helpful. Um, I think you can do the second part. The second part, it says that find the time in which only one milligram remains. Um, so you're going to have to go back to this initial formula right here in the blue box. And in place of the y of t, put in 1. And then solve for the variable t. OK? So let me go ahead and clear this. So for instance, again, here, I'm not going to solve it for you. Oh, look, they give you the, yeah. So they essentially tell you what you're supposed to do. So you've got 1 equals 10 times 2 to the negative t over 30. Okay, so one tenth equals two to the negative t over 30, solve for t. Okay, so again, ln both sides to get the negative t over 30 down and then rearrange, solve for t. Okay, um, and now they don't want you just poking it in a calculator, they actually want you to solve for the exact answer of t, so you can do that. Um, okay, and when I say Actually, I said take the ln of both sides. You can tell by their formula they took log base 2, and they did that so that the log base 2 of 2 would cancel out completely. Okay, so anytime you know the base that you're trying to cancel, go ahead and make it log base whatever on both sides. That way it cancels out. Okay, I'll let you finish that one. Okay. Um, let me look at number four here. Same kind of deal with half-life. I'll just help you get it started. Um, it's very similar to the one we just did, but here they tell you that like they're 68% left, okay? So um, if you remember our basic formula, like from up above, okay, this basic formula, this is your half-life. Okay, this is your initial amount. Okay, that pretty much goes for any um, element that you know the half-life of. That's kind of the basic setup of the formula, that the initial amount times 2 to the negative t over the half-life. Okay, so that's actually what we're going to use then on this next one. We don't have to reinvent the wheel once we already know what the basic setup is. So your basic setup here without knowing the initial, okay, is it's going to be 2 to the negative t over 5,730. Now, this, whatever your initial amount is, okay, whatever goes in this spot here, what's left out here would be 68% of that. So essentially, what we can say is that 0.68 equals 2 to the negative t over 5,730. Okay, that's what we need to solve for t. Because essentially, if I said my initial amount was 100 and there was 68% left, this would be a 68 over here. Okay, because um, it said 68% was left. So then I'm trying to figure out how much time that takes. Well, then if you divide 68 by 100, you get 0.68. So essentially, whatever your percentage is, is what's by itself on the left-hand side. And then you're just left with the base 2 on the right-hand side to the negative t over whatever the half-life is. Okay, then you're solving for t. I'll leave that to you. Um, okay, moving on. These next couple are a little tricky, not going to lie. It's Newton's law of cooling, okay? Um, and I am going to have to go to the Smart Notebook program to get a whole sheet of plain paper, okay, if you will, so that I can write on it and kind of show you what's going on, all right? So let me do that now. Um, so on this problem, problem five, it says a roast turkey is taken from an oven when its temperature has reached 185 degrees Fahrenheit. It's placed on a table in a room 
with a temperature of 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So let me just kind of write out. So the turkey is 185 degrees Fahrenheit. The room is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Now, Part A says, if the temperature of the turkey is 150 degrees Fahrenheit after half an hour, what's the temperature after 35 minutes? Okay, so again, part A. If turkey is 150 degrees Fahrenheit after half an hour, and I'll say 30 minutes, what is temperature after 35? Okay, now obviously I shorthanded the uh, question here. And then they say, you know, in your block you have T, capital T of 35 equals, here's my block, okay, degrees Fahrenheit. Now, there on the PowerPoint slides that I'm going to attach to the Google Classroom, um, there is several slides that go over Newton's law of cooling. Here's the basic formula for Newton's, okay? The derivative of temperature with respect to time equals, here's that K constant, okay, times temperature minus T sub S. Now, um, T sub S for us, T sub S has different meanings, but for us, it's like temperature of the surroundings, okay? That's kind of how I remember what the S stands for. So temperature of the surroundings. Okay, so this is our basic setup, basic formula, if you will, for Newton's law of cooling. Now, here's what we've got. Y of zero equals our temperature, our initial temperature, minus 75. Okay, now, first of all, I really didn't finish this top thing. I apologize. So let's say that we have the derivative of temperature with respect to time equals some constant and it's temperature minus 75. Again, 75 is the room temp, okay? So now we are going to let y equal the temperature minus 75, okay? So we're gonna like replace that with Y, if you will, kind of, okay? So Y equals temperature minus 75. So our initial temperature, okay? I kind of jumped ahead here. So our initial temperature minus 75 is what our initial Y is gonna be. So that gives us 185, that was our initial temperature of the turkey, minus the 75 degree room that it came out in. So that makes our initial Y 110 degrees. That's the temperature difference, okay? Okay, temperature difference. Now, um, so why is the solution of the initial value problem, okay? Um, let me go back over here. Why the derivative of y with respect to t equals ky with y sub zero equal 110 that we just found, okay? 
Um, so he, now we're going back to that very initial, um, what am, what's the word I'm looking for? That theorem that, um, <laughs> spit it out, Amy, that exponential kind of modeling, if you will, okay, the growth model. So here's what we got now. So we have y of t equals y of 0 times e to the kt power. And so that, we know that y of 0 is 110. So 110 times e to the kt power. So we're using Newton's law of cooling, but we're kind of using it inside the, um, the growth rate model that we already have been using this whole section so far, okay? So our initial temp difference is the 110. Okay, that's kind of how I think about it, is the 110, instead of it being the initial temperature, it's the initial temperature difference. Okay, that's this, initial temperature difference. Okay, so, um, now, that means that Y of 30, so after 30 minutes, right, that was the first thing they said is, um, what is the temperature of the turkey, or sorry, if the temperature of the turkey is 150 degrees after half an hour, after 30 minutes. So in 30 minutes, here's what we have, 30K, all right? Again, I just flip-flop the K and the T. So after 30 minutes, our temperature, or our time, sorry, is 30. And so that's now our new basic formula, okay? So, and that equals the 150 minus 75. Okay. So, after 30 minutes, our temperature difference is no longer 110. Our temperature difference is 150 minus 75. So, that means that... 110 e to the 30 k equals 75. 150 minus 75 is 75. Okay, so then e to the 30 k equals 75 over 110. Okay, so then again, if we ln both sides, yada yada yada, we're going to end up getting k. So 30K equals LN of 75 over 110. So, of course, K equals 130th times LN of 75 over 110. Now, if you want to be exact, that's it. Okay? I'm going to cheat a little bit for the sake of writing all of that gobbledygook and this is approximately on my calculator now anything anytime you're going to find a k on your calculator you better go plenty of decimal places i picked seven but only because on my calculator display the digit behind the four was a zero so it was a really good place to cut off okay um, if you had a digit behind that was a nine, you'd be safe to round. But you better go at least six or seven places behind the decimal point if you're going to approximate your constant. Okay, you don't just want 0 0.01. All right, that, that's not going to cut it. And again, this is approximately. Okay, so we just kind of solve for K. So again, we're using the same basic growth model. The difference is we're not talking about initial populations and current populations. We're talking about initial temperature differences versus current temperature differences, okay? But the same basic growth model. So that's what my K is, approximately, okay? Now, um, what? how do I use that? Well, I'm going to extend the page here. Um, we use that to actually solve for the first part. It says if the temperature of the turkey is 150 degrees after half an hour. That allowed us to find our K, our constant. Then it says, what's the temperature after 35 minutes? Okay, so the temperature after 35 minutes, um, Y of 35 then 
up equals 110 times e to the, I'm going to use my approximation, 0 0.01276664. And then they want it after 35 minutes. So that's my 35. Okay, times 35. Now, you poke 110 times e to the negative point, blah, 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 blah. You get approximately 70 degrees. Now, okay, that's 70 degrees that we have to add to the room temperature. Okay, so my temperature at time t. Well, actually, I shouldn't say time t. I should actually put in that that's 35 minutes. My temperature at 35 minutes is 70 plus 75. And that's 145 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be my answer to part A. OK. Um, yeah. Because if you remember way at the very beginning, um, if, if you remember back in like one of the first steps, I had like y of 0 equals, well, actually, it was over in the top right. Um, I said let y equal t minus 75. Again, that was the difference from the turkey minus the degree of the 75 degree room. Um, so now that's why if we're solving for T, then we're adding the 75 back to the Y that we just found. Okay. Ooh, all right. Um, that's just part A. <laughs> part B. Um, now part B says, when will the turkey, let me go back. So this would be 145 degrees Fahrenheit, when will the turkey have cooled to 110 degrees? Okay, well, now if it's cooled to 110 degrees, I'm, I'm not going to finish this for you. I'm just going to kind of help you along here. Um, so the, the temperature at the time T we're trying to look for is 110. Our y of t is 35. Okay, that was the 35 degree drop from part A. That's what this is. Okay, 35 degree drop from part A. That's where that 35 comes in. So we are going to have. Um, 35 equals 110 e to the negative 0 0.0127664 p. Okay. That's what you are trying to solve for t. All right. That's what you're doing there. Okay. That's pretty much all the help I can give you there on part A or part B on number five. Now, number six is the same kind of thing, same exact type of problem. And I know this recording is getting long, and I'm sorry. Um, but same type of deal here. I'm just going to help you kind of get number six set up. Okay. Um, this one's just the opposite. You take a cold drink and put it in a warmer room. and but Newton's law of cooling still is in effect, OK? So in this case, again, just to get you started, um, y of 0 equals t of 0 minus 20. Well, that is a 5 degree room minus the 20 degree room. I'm just going to cut off the degree. So negative 15, OK? So there is a negative 15 degree difference between the temperature of the pop versus the temperature of the room. We're talking Celsius in this problem. 
Um, so your y of 25 is going to equal y of 0 times e to the 25k. And again, we have to solve for k. Well, that is my y of 0 we just found is negative 15. Again, that's the temperature difference. Instead of being the you know, initial population or whatever, like we used it at the beginning of this section, it's the initial temperature difference. So negative 15 e to the 25k. Okay. Now, um, since y of 25, that's after 25 minutes, um, is the temperature at 25 minutes minus 20, that is 10 minus 20, that's negative 10 degrees. Okay, um, so again, it has raised five degrees in 25 minutes, okay? But that means the difference then between the new temperature of the can and the temperature of the room is negative 10 because it raised five degrees, okay? So again, this is our initial temperature, okay? After 25 minutes, this is our initial temperature difference, I should say. After 25 minutes, this is our new temperature difference. Okay, so that means that negative 15 E to the 25 K equals negative 10. That's how you solve for K. All right, once you have your K, then you can poke it back in and keep going. All right, I just wanted to get you started. This looks very, very, very similar, okay, to the one we did in number five. But I wanted to at least get you started because now your temperature differences are going to be negative numbers. But they end up canceling, so it's a wash, okay? So this is how you solve for K. I set it up for you, okay? After you solve for K, then you can put it back and figure out part A and B. Okay. All right. And then, whew, I'm going on almost 50 minutes. Um, I hope that helped. Let's, oh, why does it keep doing that to me? Just wanted to remind you quickly of compounding interest. Okay. So compounding interest, I want to give you the formulas. Okay. And then I'll leave you to it. The basic compound interest formula is the amount you have is the principal you invest times 1 plus R over N to the N times T. Now, P is the principal, okay? R is the rate as a decimal, okay? So again, if the rate is 5%, it's 0 0.05. N is the number of times it's compounded each year. So that means if it says something is compounded monthly, N is 12. That's 12 times a year. Okay. And T is number of years. Okay, so that's compound interest. Now, we also have continuously compounded interest. Continuously compounded interest is completely different. It's literally like compounded, if you want to think of it this way, like per second. Okay, and in that case, the amount, I remember this one as being pert. It's got the natural number E in it. Again, it's principal times E to the RT. Again, rate is as a decimal and then time is number of years. So continuously has its own formula, okay? I've got a couple dead spots on my board, but PERT is for continuously, compound interest is the blue formula. And I think that's enough to get you by, Woo! Okay, don't forget, I have office hours. So um, if you need me, holler, hope this helps.